Hi everyone, uh, welcome back to the Getabry channel. So today we're in the beautiful heritage site of Stansted Abbots at uh, French and Jupps uh, Maltings in Hertfordshire. So we're going to give you a tour. We're going to be joined by Doug, the business development manager here. We're going to get an opportunity to meet a lot of the team and then we're going to sit down and have a chat with Paul and you're going to learn a lot about roasting and speciality moths. So come on in and check it out. As you come in, you can see the surroundings are beautiful. It's obviously a greenfield site, a lot of heritage, all listed buildings. Um, you can see some of the buildings here are old um, traditional floor moldings. And what we're going to do is we're going to take you down to where the green barley comes in and gets processed in the malt and subsequently roasted into specialty malts. Okay, so the reason I brought you guys here is I want you to meet the people behind the brand. So it's a business with over 330 years heritage. It's a family owned business. Been here a few times now, lovely, lovely people. And um, I hope that that message comes across today. A lot of the team here have worked here for decades. You're gonna to get to meet Andy, he's been here for 43 years, uh, for example. They really care about the relationships um, with their customers. I hope that you enjoy this tour and get to learn a little bit about the people behind the name and also get to learn a little bit about specialty malt roasting. Hi, my name is Paul. Um, I'm the Managing Director of French & Shops. So I've been with French & Shops now approaching three years. My career, I've been brewing for over 30 years and then uh, migrated into the world of maltings. And uh, it's been a phenomenal experience. I love the fact that we're a small family business, a uh, team of around 20 employees. Everyone is passionate and dedicated uh, and, and love what they do. Um, you know, our world is malt, roasted malts, and uh, we're very proud of that. Hello, my name's Doug, and I'm the business development manager here at French & Jobs. It's a great company. We've been here 300 plus years. Uh, it's a good job. Uh, I've worked here 27 years. Um, I started off working in the laboratory here, but my role's progressed and uh, we're developing the business, talking with brewers and looking at their needs and trying to supply their needs. You can see really briefly here a malt way bridge and you can see where the, the tipping bin is for barley coming in. So barley's coming in here, getting transferred into this building, which has lots of storage bins in it. The malt is then stored in there, analyzed before it gets processed through the production facility. This is basically where everything starts and where it finishes. So as I said, um, barley being delivered comes in and goes into these large storage bins here and um, before it gets processed and then equally once everything's finished and packaged it comes through here to get um, bagged up pallet wrapped and ready for onward distribution I'm Jamie, um, I'm a warehouseman, been here 11 years. My brother Matthew's worked here around 15, 16 sort of years as well. I don't know really, it's just a quirky place, it's you know old, it's traditional, it's, it's an interesting job to work. Hi there, my name's Dean Smart, I've been here for 27 years and I'm the foreman. We're a big family really, the job's enjoyable and uh, we've got good bosses. Connor Jones, we've been working here for the last four years, in the warehouse, packaging, stacking bags, weighing off, all sorts. Hi, my name is Ed. Been here a year now, picking up everything, bagging up, learning the gist of the job. Connor's father is Paul, and Paul is a roasting man here. Yeah. Ed's father is Ron, and Ron is one of the maintenance team here. Um, this used to be uh, a floor molting until about the 60s. The malt used to be turned every day by hand, shovels and rakes. The malt would then dry out and then it would be used as base malts or white malts. The ceilings are low uh, for the simple reason, the more floors you have in a building, the more malt you made. So uh, unfortunately, uh, there's a lot of banged heads, I think, in those days. <laughs> see, it's all, all the original is, is still here. So you can see packaging team are around me here. So uh, every bag, they take a little pinch and put it into this sample jar. And then at the end of that pallet being done, that gets taken over to Karen in the lab and she works out the COA. And then the COA, which is certificate of analysis, travels with the malt so that you're getting consistently high spec time and time again. Okay, so that was where it all begins and equally where it all ends. So now what we're gonna do, we're gonna take you down and show you the steep 
germination and roasting. So as we were walking across there, you see there was conveyors above our head. So the milk gets conveyed up into the top steep vessels. So the steep vessels hold approximately 18 tons of barley. And the barley is soaked, a 10 hour soak and then 14 hours drained. And the guys up in the control room then obviously manage the temperature. Three days of steeping. Once that's finished, it gets dropped down into the germination vessel. Now these vessels rotate really slowly and do around three turns per day. And the idea of what you're doing at this stage then is to get the, the germination, to get the little shoots and rootlets. And why we're doing that is obviously to get the conversion so that whenever we roast it, we've got that nice sugar. And then the sugar obviously has got the nice extract, which creates the nice flavors. Doug has explained to me that there's four uh, germination drums here and four steeping drums above them. You can see another steeping drum over here. Um, this one is specific for Peyton malts, whereas these are specific for crystal malts. And equally, the reason why the rotation takes place in the germination is so that the rootlets don't knit together, so the rotation splits that up from happening. So we're just uh, on our way up into the control room, which is just on my right-hand side here. This is the, the automated side of the maltings, moving the malt, controlling it, putting it into roasters, uh, taking it out but Andy our roasting man is now getting up to a point where he needs to physically look at it and compare it with a known standard so he gets the right colour for the malt we're making today. This is why Andy is now coming and going, he's, he's, it's a fine tuning now. Hello my name's Andy Chalkley, I've been working here 43 years, I'm one of the maintenance engineers, love the work. Never know what you can do from one day to the next, uh, it's always been a pleasure to come to work. Oh yeah, the, the roasting process needs to be done by a skilled operator. There's so many factors involved in the fact that it's a natural product, varies from day to day, even throughout the day it varies, so you can't automate it. You've got to be here present to analyse what you're making and also just in case anything goes wrong. When you're I'm trying to match those two colours. Okay. That's a 26 colour, that's a 39 colour, they're both caramel and I want to get somewhere in between. That at the moment is not quite there yet. That it's just would, a little bit late. And then, yeah, yeah, that would probably be about a 15 colour, about my colour gold. These sort of uh, colours, one degree in temperature can make a difference. Um, my name's Matthew Olsen, uh, I've worked for the company for 20 years. I love the place, I do, I, it's a very unique place to work. Um, I'm part of the malt production team. I'm in charge of the steeping, germination, kiln loading, um, I've done a bit of malt roasting, warehouse work, a bit of everything really. <laughs> you can see here now, Andy is in and out there every, literally every few minutes. He takes a sample, he cools the sample, he takes it in, he grinds it, and then he color checks it. The reason you can't automate this and you need Andy's craft and skill and experience is because temperatures change, the climate changes, the weather changes, it all has an effect on the machine. All the different things and variables need to be considered by him. And he's just come out point and said he's good to go with this batch. Doug, the reason you're doing this is so that you can see the conversion within the grain to make sure that you're getting the consistency that you want. It's a visual test. Look at what you're doing is you're taking, you're taking the standard here. What you're looking for here is evenness and even roast across each individual grain. You know, if you're making a black malt, for example, and the, you roast it too far, you can pick it up with this visual check. We can see Andy's preparing the second drum, he's checking, he's running back and forth to make sure that the colour's on spec and that he's got it exactly where he wants to. You can hear the green malt coming into the drum that's just been empty. So whilst beneath where I'm standing at the moment, there's fans um, cooling the air and the malt is being mixed to make sure that it's cooled down properly. Whilst that cooling's taking place of the last batch, 
the next batch is already being filled and also we can see over here that the tests are being done just to empty the second batch that he's put on this morning. Obviously everything's conveyed back and forth, so we're going to take a very quick look in the kiln now. Look, I've brought you around here to give you a little look at the kiln. This is for painting mulch, so whenever the steep's finished, it obviously needs to be dried out a certain extent before it goes in to be roasted. So it comes over via conveyors into the kiln, so false bottom here and hot air blown through and then taken out through the top. Once the kilning's complete, it then goes back over into the roasting drum. As we come up here, you can see this is pretty much automated. So Doug was explaining that the, the mold comes over. You can hear the conveyors just running in the background there. Goes into the kiln. It's dried to the set percentage moisture level that they're looking for. Then into a holding bin and then back over for roasting in the pit and molds. Uh, my name's Del and I'm the paint and roaster. Warehouse man, tea maker, coffee maker. Um, nearly 20 years now, so they, they look after you here. It's a nice company to work for. So we're back to where we started, where the barley is um, intake and where the packaging area is. So now what we're going to do is take you upstairs and we're going to get Karen to let us have a look around the lab as well. So guys, uh, what an incredible day at French and Jups. Um, a great experience, great learning experience, lovely, lovely people. We hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out and ask. Thanks very much for watching guys and until next time, happy brewing.